everyone, my name is Jacqueline Burkpile and I am the editor at Church Pops English Edition. I'm here with Bonnie Engstrom. She is the woman whose child is the miracle behind Archbishop Fulton Sheen's being named Blessed. Hi Bonnie, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me on. I'm so excited. This is such an amazing opportunity for us to be able to speak with you. So when did this miracle happen? How your son is eight now, correct? Correct. Yes. Yes. So it happened with the day James was born. So um, he'll be nine in September. So almost nine years ago, um, he was born at home and he was a stillborn. Okay. Absolutely no signs of life. Yeah, so um, he did not have a heartbeat for 61 minutes. And um, when he came back to life at the end of those 61 minutes, the doctors, everyone expected massive organ failure. But instead of, instead of him dying again um, at the worst, or at best, him having just a whole list of uh, very severe disabilities, he is just a normal eight-year-old boy. That's amazing. So yeah. Did, did you, so he was born at home. Did y'all take him to the hospital and did this happen at the hospital? Yes. Yeah, so he, um, he was born at home and then, um, we were at home for about 20 minutes while we waited for the ambulance to come. And then it was about a 20 minute drive from our home to, uh, downtown Peoria, Illinois, um, to the children's hospital, which is a phenomenal hospital, um, like state of the art equipment and everything um, and then he spent about another 20 minutes in the emergency room there and then at you know and that was when they were it was there in the emergency room that they were going to call time of death so wow. yeah so he had no heartbeat at all right he was um in the ambulance and in the emergency room mm -hmm. he was hooked up to a heart monitor and um, he had what they called pulseless electrical activity so um like if you think of a heart beat and what it looks like it has like the big spike you know up and down which is the heart actually pumping and then it has like the little squiggles um those little squiggles are the electrical activity that the heart puts out and so he didn't have the heart beat he just had the squiggles on the heart monitor but legally you can be declared dead if you are pea on the monitor and for you know the 40 minutes that he was hooked up to a heart monitor he was pea and had no pulse. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So can you just tell me the full story? I know you just gave me an overview of what happened. The full story. How did, how exactly did you come to use, decide Fulton Sheen was the right guy for this? And yes. how did he end up curing your baby? I know what happened. But what hap what what's the what's the story behind it? Sure, that yeah. The details behind yes. it. Yeah. Um, so when I was pregnant with James, uh, my husband and I were watching YouTube videos of Fulton Sheen. You can watch old episodes of his show Life is Worth Living and yes. uh, watch different things of him preaching and stuff. So we were watching those and were just really taken by him. Um, and we, I remember talking to Travis and saying, you know, his cause for canonization is open here in our diocese. And this guy's going to be a saint. Like, it was just so obvious to us that he was going to be a saint someday. So Travis and I decided um, right then and there in my second trimester, like, we would name our son after Fulton Sheen. Um, and so from from that day, we just kind of placed him, placed our unborn baby under Fulton Sheen's patronage um, and called on him for prayers, you know. So so that was kind of how, that's how we cho came to choose Fulton Sheen. Um, then what happened, um, the reason that we attribute the miracle to Fulton Sheen is because during those 61 minutes, and more specifically when we were at home, um, waiting for the paramedics, there's three things that happened where, um, it was the middle of the night, you know, most people were not aware that there was an emergency happening and, and, um, but in those, in those moments at home, um, my husband did an, an emergency baptism on James where he invoked the name of Fulton Sheen. 
Um, and then we had a friend who was present. And when she heard Travis say Fulton Sheen's name, she immediately um, I, I just kind of had this powerful encounter, um, this just, you know, this vision of Fulton Sheen and just kind of this overwhelming sense of his presence and his presence in our son's life. And then the third thing that happened was, um, you know, I was just shutting down and going into a state of shock and, um, I didn't have the, I didn't have anything. What am I trying to say? I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything to say. I didn't know what was happening, but I do remember saying Fulton Sheen's name, Fulton Sheen, Fulton Sheen, Fulton Sheen over and over again in my head. And I really believe that was just kind of my way of, you know, calling out to him to kind of say the prayers that I couldn't pray, you know, to kind of, because I couldn't think things through. Um, so in, in those 61 minutes, those were like the three ways that he was invoked and no other saint was invoked, you know, in that time. Um, and then the, the hours, the days, the weeks, the months after that, um, we had people all over the world who were praying for a miracle for our son and praying through the intercession of Fulton Sheen. So it was, it was amazing. So the miracle yeah. people, how did people find out about the miracle? Did y'all just tell people or I yes. mean, how did they, how did it spread so quickly? Well, the miracle or the prayer request well, was the, okay. So, cause he was, he was still born for 61 minutes. Right. So did y'all send out the prayer request at the time and then it just distributed or how did that, how does that how did yeah. that happen? So when he came back to life, they expected massive organ failure and for him to die again. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but the day that he was born, I got on Facebook and my blog and I asked people to pray and, and that just spread. People shared that blog post and they shared that Facebook prayer request over and over and over again throughout the internet. And, you know, parish prayer chains and things like that. You know, people were calling each other because this was 2010 and people still called each other, <laughs> but, you know, so it was, it, it was just amazing. It was really the power of the internet, I guess. Um, because we didn't like, we knew he was alive, but we didn't know what he, his, he was going to be like, and we didn't think he would survive. And so really James showed us that the miracle had happened as he hit milestones. So we just kind of, just like with every baby, you have to wait for every baby to hit their milestones. And that was how we knew that he was okay. That is so incredible. Yeah. So were there any signs of an unhealthy pregnancy throughout your pregnancy? No. Um, I had, I had like very mild gestational diabetes that I was easily able to control through diet. Um, like I, I was on the border of pass fail, you know? Um, but that was it. The, the reason James was a stillborn is because he had a knot in his umbilical cord. Um, and I mean, it's a fairly rare thing to happen. Um, and when he was, when I was delivering him, the knot tightened and it tightened so tightly that it cut off his oxygen supply. So that's, that's what happened. And there's no way to know that. Like you can't see that in a sonogram. You have, you know, it's not until the baby's born that you find out there's a knot in the cord. Right. So what, I mean, I guess, did y'all choose Archbishop Fulton Sheen during the pregnancy or uh, was this just a thing that happened uh, as y'all were trying to maybe get him to come back to life? So um, kind of like I said, when I was in the second trimester and we had like assigned our baby to Fulton Sheen. Um, you, I think it, it just kind of, it was, we had built this habit. And so the habit just kind of carried over, if that makes sense. We were already praying and asking for his prayers. Um, and so it was just a natural transition to continue that after he was born and an end in such a crisis. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So how did you send how did this get sent to Pope Francis to, for approval? Yeah. Um, so when James was uh, still in the first year of his life, 
and it was obvious that he didn't have this, you know, litany of special needs that he was supposed to have. Um, we knew that there had been a miracle. Um, and so we contacted the Sheen Foundation in Peoria and told them the story. And they spoke with the postulator in Rome. The postulator is um, the person who kind of takes all the information, compiles it, and then presents it to the congregation for the causes of saints. So when they told the postulator about it, he he was like, okay, this never happens. <laughs> you know, this this is a very rare thing. We should definitely investigate it. And so that opened uh, or led to a tribunal being open for an investigation to see if a miracle did happen and if it happened through Fulton Sheen's intercession. So there was, you know, witnesses who gave their testimony, um, medical records were turned over and then given to the postulator who then presented it to the congregation for the causes of saints. And once they and their advisors approved it, then it got passed on to Pope Francis. Wow. Yeah. So I saw your little snippet of when you found out that the miracle had been approved, did you find out with everybody else on the news or were you called? Um, no, I was not called. So it happened in an email was sent to me in the very early morning hours. So if I would have been awake and checking my email, I would have found out before most people. <laughs> But I slept in <laughs> and um, I woke up because I was, my phone buzzed with an alarm, I think from Facebook maybe. Someone had, and it was still pretty early, it was like 6.30 in the morning, but um, someone had seen the, a press statement and had tagged me because they were just so overjoyed. Um, so that's how I found out it was through Facebook. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how does it feel to be, or to be the miracle, I mean, not exactly you, but your son, be the miracle behind Arch Archbishop Fulton Sheen being named a blessed? Because this has been something long awaited. And it's interesting how it happened in your diocese. And yeah. of all dioceses, you know, yes. it happened in, in your diocese and your diocese is the one that has opened the pro or wanted to open the process of getting him canonized. So yeah. How, how, how does that, how does that make you feel? What's your reaction? I, so I love that. One of the reasons that we were so drawn to Fulton Sheen is because he just felt like a local boy, you know, I, and I know. I know he lived in Washington, D.C. for a long time. He lived in New York City for a long time. But I really think that just kind of his warmth and his wit, um, that there's just something very Midwestern about that. And and so I really I really loved that about him. Um, so, you know, the diocese where he grew up, the cathedral where he served as a little boy, where he um, was ordained a priest for the Diocese of Peoria, um, like that's where this is all happening, you know, and we're just, we're just right here. We're like a stone's throw away. Um, I think that's so, that's so cool. Um, that, I don't know. I, there's something about the Midwest. Um, we're called flyover country. We don't, you know, unless it's like Chicago, no one cares about us, but, um, you know, God cares. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I think that's such a neat connection. I love it. I think it's very providential because it's almost like he planned it in a yeah. way, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so beautiful. So do you consider him a good saint friend now? Yes, yes. One of the things um, that I love about Fulton Sheen is, um, I mean, all of, the, all of the saints, the church gives us saints to... Um, help us grow in holiness and to bring us closer to Christ. And I know Fulton Sheen has definitely done that for me. His example has um, made me more devoted to the Eucharist, um, has helped me in, to grow in relationship with our mother Mary. And, you know, all of that has made me love and appreciate God so much more than I did even, and not because of the miracle, you know, but just because of my friendship with, with Fulton Sheen. Um, he has really, you know, iron sharpening iron. 
Actually, I'm not doing anything to sharpen him. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he's definitely <laughs> sharpening me, you know. So he's he's just been great. So Because in the end, it's all about Jesus. And so that's what holy friendships are for. Absolutely. So what would you say to others about the power of his intercession? Oh, I mean, I would... So I think that he is... Um, He's such a persistent, faithful prayer, you know, when he was alive, he made a holy hour every day for 60 years plus. And now he's spending eternity in like a perpetual holy hour. It's so (laughs) beautiful, you know? Um, And he, so yeah, call on him. He's so good. Um, And even if it's because, you know, asking for a prayer or asking for a miracle, you're not always going to get the miracle, right? Like, my family has suffered. We have this amazing miracle, but there's been other things that we have asked for that we haven't received. But just knowing that, um, you know, that Fulton Sheen or the Blessed Mother or whoever is in heaven interceding for us and kind of helping us to accept God's spirit and God's will and, um, you know, that their prayers are fortifying us. It's such a beautiful thing. That's amazing. It, it is very powerful. I, I mean, I'm... Whenever I saw your miracle, I was like, I'm going to call on Fulton Sheen more often. And I'm sure a lot of people have felt the same way. Have yeah, you, I hope so. Uh, have you come across that yet? I have. I um, I have met a lot of people, actually, who have their own stories of miracles. Uh, a friend of mine, um, they were unable to conceive for years and um, finally did a, uh, a nine-day novena to Fulton Sheen and... At the end of that ninth day, nine months later, they had a baby. That is and like, incredible. It, yeah. So just, I, and I've heard lots of stories, especially about unborn or just born babies. I think Fulton Sheen must have a real strong place in his heart for them because he's a great interse- intercessor for that. So is there anything you'd like to say that I haven't asked yet? Um, the one thing that I always like to say is that I I just want it to be so abundantly clear that um, like this isn't about this isn't about me this isn't about my son this isn't even about Fulton Sheen like all of this is about Jesus Christ it was Jesus Christ who raised James from the dead it's Jesus Christ who conquered death it is God our Heavenly Father who loves us and cares for us and you know his plans and his timing are are perfect for us because of his great love and mercy and so you know everything I just I wanted to all turn back to God um, it's him who should be praised um, and it's it's him who loves us so much you know and made all of this possible so that's what I want to make sure everyone knows praise God thank you so much Thank you. Well, Bonnie, thank you for meeting with me. I'm so grateful that we had this opportunity. I'm Jacqueline Burkpile. I am the editor here at Church Pop, the English edition. And here I have been talking with Bonnie Engstrom, the woman whose child was brought back to life after praying to Bishop Fulton Sheen. So thank you for joining us. And Thank you. It was so great. It was so wonderful. So have a wonderful day. I'm happy that we were able to speak. Yes. Thank you. God bless. Thanks.